Hello and welcome back to a new video in my Unreal Engine 5 tutorial series. In the last video we have finished up our uh, move component and our My Statue Actor basically to be fancy, to be stoppable, continuable, pausable, resettable, event based with delegates and we made some really really fancy stuff and we now have this amazing component driven moving statue and it's just driven by one component and a bit of implementation for that component in the actor and I think we got quite far with that. Uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, gonna go a completely different approach so basically what we have done previously we have written our component in C++ to be really modular and basically be able to put a component wherever we want and then just go in and customize it via blueprints in the my statue actor itself so basically we have already written some actor code even through the actor code was basically just based on the components events that are assigned to that actor and basically what we have done take it at one coded component and drag them all together to create this nice and easy by game designers level designers editable form so that they can do it all here inside of blueprints what we're gonna do today is something different. Today we're gonna do an actor itself. So we had a component for an actor and now we're gonna basically implement the actor itself in C++. Why are we gonna do this or why would you do this? You could say like, well, should we just do this all with components? It would be ideal if you have something that you know that is reusable or that is really keen on to be reusable then of course you do it with a component or you should do it with a component. But there are also some situations where you want to actually write your actor in C++. One example would be for example if you know the game Mirror's Edge. There you can find several uh, switching boards uh, in the in the scene and basically what you can do is you can put out the chip and it's kind of like an invert collectible which is just like go around and collect them all. Um, probably had some video there uh, over late to show you what I mean. Noah hat dafür gesorgt, dass sich die Kabale unauffällig verhält und sich langsam einen Ruf aufbaut. Ich schätze mal, damit ist es jetzt vorbei, was? And this is something that would be really, really um, yeah, usable for an, an actor itself, even if this is like EA and not with Unreal, but you could like write this all into an actor or basically base this all on an actor. So you could like do the overlay that comes when you are near one of these boxes, this like overlay, you could write this in C++ that this gets triggered and all the components are there mm -hmm. and um, all the behavior that there's like an animation that there are like three meshes, like the box itself, the door and the part that's gonna be rubbed out all of that all the logic that is counting towards your inventory and marking this in the in the safe game as, as, as collected this can be all like offloaded to an actor of course you're gonna have a bit of hierarchy because they are like in mirror's edge there are two visualizations of these boxes they're kind of like two different type of boxes so they are kind of like it's 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 kind of the same animation but from a different point and some different visual uh, appears um what you can then of course do is you write like the base class in C++ and then you could like, if you talk about this in the Unreal way, writing the base class in C++ and then taking two blueprints that base that are based on the C++ class and basically just customize the, 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 the feel and look of it. But basically building on top of the already written actor that does like all the hard work underneath with safe game interaction and stuff. And that's basically what we're gonna do today. We're gonna write an actor that can be uh, consumed. So a collectible actor and what we're also gonna do is today we're gonna also make this uh, aware of different situations. So we're gonna have a, the same idea like in Mirror's Edge that you have 
two collectibles, uh, but in our case, they, in the case of Mirror's Edge, they look different, but work the same. And in our case, they are gonna look the same, but work different or be customizable in the way they work. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, we need to create a new actor. We're gonna go to tools, new C++ class, which is gonna bring up that window that is not really useful like that. So I'm gonna zoom out, sorry for that, but I'm gonna probably zoom in here from, um, from the editing software so you can see what's going on. So what we can want to do now is we want to create an actor. We don't want to create something of these fancy actors. We just want to create a normal actor. Now we need to give it a name. I'm going to call this my uh, collectable, uh, collectable actor. Your CPP tutorial around him is correct. So click create class to make sure this gets added to C++ and it's going to hot reload. I'm going to zoom in already. And if we now would uh, press control space, go to our C++ class, there it is. We have the my collectible actor. I can already drag and drop it into the scene. Now it disappeared, but if I would go into the scene view, you can see the my collectible actor, there it is. And well, we can do nothing with it. We cannot move it. It has, it has a few parameters, but basically, um, no parameters that we kind of like, uh, like to see like, the the move the, the 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 location rotation that's all not attached to it because well basically this is just an empty container and if we have an empty container basically nothing is attached we don't even have a scene transform for it and that's what we now need to fix so basically what we need to do we already did this here inside of the uh, my statue we need to assign a move a root component if we do this with blueprint we have a default one that we can kind of like switch out if we're dragging you over that but basically what we had now is a uh, actor without a root component so we need to do this all ourselves in c plus plus so let's jump directly into visual studio and no i don't give feedback let's reload this and boom we are in my collectible actor uh, dot h and my collectible actor dot cpp. Let's first talk about the header and what we got here. So first of all, we get a class which now uh, uh, extends the actor. So we are no longer extending the scene component. We are now extending the actor class, a actor, which uh, is basically the basic implementation. It has the basic functionality of an actor. We also get a constructor, same as uh, with the component. We also get a begin play event, works also similar to the components begin play event. Actually, it works like kind of the same, but on an actor and not a component. And we have also a tick event, which now uh, is, is quite a bit different. Now it's just called tick and not component tick, which is basically a tick event with a delta time, which is called periodically. Taking a look inside of the C++ implementation, you can see that we also have this B can ever tick. So also we can set if this actor will ever tick. We're just gonna leave it for true uh, to true for now because I think we're gonna need it in the future or we're gonna actually need it. All right, so now we have a very basic container and now we have uh, basically one thing to do. We need to add its root component or oh, that's not like the one thing to do, but it's like one important thing to do to start with that. So what shall be the root component? Uh, in our case, we want to have some collectible item in the world. So we want to render it. So we basically need a static mesh. Uh, how do we get a static mesh? Well, basically we uh, get one by having a private member. So let's add one private members here. And we're basically going to have a static mesh pointer somewhere down here. What is the class of a static mesh? You could uh, take a look at this and see how, how it's called, but it's actually called uh, U static mesh component because it's a static mesh component. We want to have a pointer of that static mesh. Com I'm just going to call it static mesh, just like that. No, not with component, just static mesh. All right, so static mesh uh, for rendering. Let's just do something like that. All right, and so now that we have this um, parameter, we need to initialize it. So now there is one big question. Where do we initialize it? Do we initialize it at the begin play event or at the constructor? Well, you could think like, yeah, it's kind of like something that might needs to be done on a per instance. We want to render it by uh, an instance space. So let's do it in begin play. 
but wrong. That's not what we want to do. Actually, all the setup of the components can be done at the constructor. Later on, when we are coming to stuff like binding function stuff, we need to do it on a per instance base. But currently, because, well, basically, we do not depend on this nice keyword, this, even through in the background, we do. But basically, the this is just our template. And in our template, we basically want to assign the static mesh to basically tell or build up our static template, our template that might be created in memory. We basically want to build this up by giving it a static mesh. And then when it's copied and doing an Unreal Engine is doing a deep copy, it's going to copy them over. So what we basically want to do is create the root, because it's the root component, for rendering. So how do we create a static mesh uh, component? So that's nothing like we don't want to call new, like a and like uh, use static mesh uh, static mesh component. No, we're not going to do something like that. I think this does not even work, but yeah, it would need like an, a parameter here. But that's not how this works. But actually, this is something that you just need to know. This uh, creating uh, sub objects. Uh, works by uh, calling the create default sub object function. This is a templated function. The template argument is a component that you need, which is the static mesh component here in this case. Come use static mesh component. There we go. And then you're also going to supply the name. Uh, if you're going to do text in the Unreal Engine, you should use this text macro, which is just uh, making sure that you are using the right text uh, function, in this case, the Unicode one, which is basically just similar if we would just write something like that. But it might be that we are compiling on ASCII, then it would be something like that. The Unreal Engine is happy with both of them, but it's kind of like common practice to use this text macro to make sure that you get the right one. All right, so I'm just going to call it setting mesh here and boom, static mesh should be created. Uh, there's one important information. If you are setting up the root object, so the first uh, one, you need to make sure that you assign this root component parameter of the superclass or one superclass to this static mesh. So just make sure that you also have this root component equals to your component that you want to have as a root, just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So these two calls should set up our root component as a static mesh. Um, actually, we could try this out here. Let's actually try this out if this actually compiles. We might miss a header, but we're just going to go to Unreal and try to rebuild. But I'm actually really thinking that we are missing a header. No, we are not missing a header. Interesting. Then this is just the header is just missing. Yeah, it's probably the header is just missing if you don't have included this yet in the project for Visual Studio so that it has not to include. So you might have an issue that you are not getting some IntelliSense for that or even not Visual Assist for that. If you have this issue, make sure to include the right uh, headers. Actually, what you want to do if you, if you include something, always include it before this dot generated. So somewhere here. And basically what you want to include is component, static mesh component. And if you have any issues with that, this should solve it. So just to show you that everything still works, I could rebuild again. I don't know why it kind of like is so fast now. I don't know, but somehow it is. And if I now would basically take the my collectible actor, you can actually see it already placed it at a non-root position. And if I now click on details, you can also see that it has this root component associated with that. But as you can see, we cannot edit this. We cannot put any parameters in here. And we also get some warning here. Native components are edited. Uh, are editable when declared as an F property in C++. So I click on C++ and I'm actually right here. So let's add a U property. So basically what we just want to have is a edit anywhere so that we can edit it everywhere where we want. Adding this in and doing a quick uh, hot reload should give us Boom, there you can see it already reloaded. I can now click the static mesh and I can go in and set something. I could like give it a sphere. And now if I would hit begin play, boom, we have a sphere. But actually, I don't want to use a sphere. I want to uh, use a specific mesh and I also want to go in and maybe add some physics to that so that physics is simulated correctly. So basically what I want to do is on top of that C++ code, I want to add some a hell of a lot of information and more implementations and specifications. So 
what is that screaming for blueprints. So what I can also do always is to right click the my collectible actor and say create C++ uh, class derivative from my collectible actor or create blueprint class based on my collectible actor. In this case, we want to have a blueprint class. I'm going to click that one. Uh, now it's having this, this, this ill formed window again. So basically here now it's called my, my collectible actor. I want to call this uh, XP collect actor because the shall be an actor which later one later on is used for uh, collecting XP in the world. Uh, let's go maybe back to the normal scale just like that. Where has it actually created this inside of contents? Yeah, XP collect actor. That's exactly what I want. Now we can see we have the static mesh. Now I can assign something. Let's maybe scroll a bit down until I find something interesting. I actually have something in my mind. SM corner frame is what I'm looking for. So I could like add this one in. I also want to simulate some physics. So I also need to give it some math, maybe three kilograms. It's maybe a bit too, yeah, I, th I think it's okay. So just gonna give it here an appearance and some physics so that we can later on play a bit around with that. Let's compile this one and head back into our level. And now we can place this proper actor here. Could like maybe move this also up a bit so we can see it falling. There you could see it, so it bounce. Uh, maybe we're gonna put it there so that we can directly see it falling. Yeah, maybe not that far, something like here. All right, there you go. So now we have basically our custom C++ actor falling into our scene. All right, good. So what I want to do next is let me maybe place this back on the ground because this is going to conflict with what I'm doing next. Uh, basically, what I want to do is when an XP actor is collected, so when you basically come near it and it should be collected to you, I just want to make it bounce up and then disappear. And to make this happen, I kind of like make a function that makes it bounce. And that I'm going to do down here. So let's create a function. It's going to be a U function and it's going to be uh, blueprint callable actually, because we're going to later on have this patches via blueprints actually. So let's make this uh, U function blueprint callable void. How did I call this? Uh, not jump, uh, bounce. No, it's actually not a bounce. It's actually more jump. Jump is a bit more. More, more, more nice. Okay, so I'm gonna have it to set function jump, and I'm also gonna add a velocity somewhere in here because I just wanna have a controllable parameter. So jump function here, add some implementation here. What can I do? We always use the get relative location, but we don't have it because we are not in a component. Actually, when we are in an actor, there's a function called actor location, which is gonna give us the current actor's location. So we're gonna have a new location. It's gonna be equal to the get to current actor location. And then, I'm, uh, and then I'm gonna basically take this new location. I'm gonna uh, increment the Z value by our velocity for now. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna say set actor location no, not label, location, to basically plunk in a new direction and uh, location. And this should make the actor move or jump. Even though the jump is going to be quite binary, but you're going to see in a sec. So let's go back into the Unreal Engine, hot reload that, shouldn't take long because I know why it's so fast. I didn't update the Unreal Engine yet, or maybe it auto updated itself. I'm not quite sure of that. If you could like see this, nah, however, whatever. So let's maybe now go into the my uh, uh, collect actor, go to the event graph, go to the event begin play. Let's add a delay here so that we can, that's not, that's not starting directly. Let's maybe add a two second delay. And then I'm just gonna call the jump function, which is target as my collectible actor. This is the function you just defined. Let's maybe put in 200 as a value. And let's see what this is gonna do. So let's click on play. And this should jump up in any second. There you see. So, it, so if I replay this, as you can see, one, two, jump. And it just goes up and falls down. Nice. Uh, or is it actually nice? No, it's actually not. I think this is way too binary. How can we solve this? Well, earlier on when we used the uh, move component, it was actually moving by a delta value. But what we are doing here is basically we are going to apply an impulse to it. So we're going to give it a short impulse. Then uh, it basically should respond to that impulse by jumping up using the physics system. And um, then it should fall down back again. Uh, how can we do this? Well, um, let's go back into the C++ and instead of doing this all with actor location, 
uh, we actually now want to do this with uh, physics. And the physics is attached to the root component, to our static mesh. And so our static mesh has all of the physics function. And one of the function is the add impulse function, which is going to add a, a, a physics impulse to that. I'm going to add an impulse here. So the first ones are just going to be zero. And the last one is going to be our velocity. But bear with me, I'm just going to multiply this by 500. You're going to see in a sec why we need or why I need to do this. This is just some value that I played around a bit to get it right. So just going to apply like 500 and then see what it's going to do. So let's jump in back here. Actually, this is now going to go down to something like five, but I just want to have this a bit more controllable and not too high. Uh, let's recompile and reload on the fly to get the new code in, the new jump code, which shall now give the, the actor a little impulse. So let's hit play and it should now, boom, get this impulse and jump. That's exactly what I want. As you can see, a nice impulse that is basically moving it up. So now one thing missing is basically destroying the object. I could do this in several ways. I could maybe uh, destroy it when it hits the ground, but I'm not going to do this as fancy. I'm just going to give it a lifetime after it was uh, like it, after it was launched. It should like after a few sec fall down. Um, for that, I'm actually going to write. Yeah, I'm just going to write this all into the jump function. It's not 100% clean because the jump function shall just jump and not handle lifetime management and stuff like that. But I'm just going to do this like that now. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is execute jump using the physics system. And then I basically want to initiate object destruction. And what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to introduce a new few private variables. One boolean is uh, launched. And this is going to be false because by default it's not going to be launched. And we're also going to have, which is also a property, a your property float. Uh, no, not float, edit anywhere, sorry. But it's of type of float and it's a lifetime. And by default I just want to have a lifetime of maybe like two seconds, something like that. Um, yeah, so basically what I want to do is as soon as it's launched is true, I uh, want to make sure that it, it's going to be decrementing the lifetime. So in the tick function, I'm going to check if it's launched and if this is the case, I'm going to decrement lifetime. Uh, and so let's set the lifetime minus equal delta time. And now I'm going to check the object or the, it's not an object, it's an actor. Destruction. So if lifetime smaller equals zero, then I basically want to call the actors destroy function, which is gonna destroy it. All good. And uh, now the only thing left to do is basically set this to true. And I'm actually gonna do two more steps to make this a bit more robust. First of all, I'm gonna check if it's not launched because I just want to jump once. Make sure jump is only executed once just that it's not like going out of control if you're like fastly moving forward and backward and it's kind of like launching way too much up that it's basically in control and what i also want to do is i just want to optimize this tick a bit so what i want to do is at the the begin play event i want to basically uh ticking is only required after launching so basically gonna set tick enable to false here and so actor tick enable to false here and as soon as i launched i also want to set this to true now and if i would go in even more i could actually set the tick interval to something like point 0.1 float which is basically telling the engine to only tick this once a sec which is just gonna remove some overhead of the engine even through this is like not really required. It could actually screw us up. So we're just going to remove it. If you're not like doing full number lifetime, then it's really not having not enough position. But I think this is enough. Uh, um, There's enough optimization it already to make this like that. All right. So let's try this out. If this works, reload the code. And we should also get as soon as the code is in. There it is. If we click the object, we should have the the lifetime here. You can basically see that I can now set the lifetime. Currently it's at a two. Let's see if this works. So one, two, fire. 
one, two, dead. And there it is, gone. Maybe a bit too short the lifetime, so I could maybe go in. You make this three seconds, this should be, should be good. So one, two, three, death. Okay, so as you can see, this is already working. We have now a way to basically call this jump function and then it's basically gonna jump and destroy itself, good. So now we just need to trigger this jump function uh, when the player is close. Can we do this? Yes, without any issues. Oh, if without any issues, actually not. It's actually not that easy, but you're gonna see. So the first thing that we need is a new component. We need a triggerable area. So I'm gonna need a box uh, collision th stuff again. We used this last video. Um, actually, I'm gonna tell you the header where this is in. If you have some issues with that, it's inside components box component, because actually what we're gonna do is add one of the box component. The box component does have the collision attached to it. So basically what I have here now is this use setting mesh component, edit anywhere. Actually, I might want to have this at edit defaults only. I don't want to let somebody tinkers around on an instance with that. That should just be set on the blueprint uh, of the blueprint class. Same gonna, we're also going to have for a U box component pointer, which is our box collision here, something like that. And then we just want to make sure to also create it one, so create collision box, so collision box, and we're gonna call again the create default subobject function with the text macro, which is our box collision, and it's gonna be of the type u box component, something like that, yeah. So now we just have one issue left. Where is it in our hierarchy? Well, we can't not really tell if we, um, but probably because we just have a root component, it will be behind our root component, but you should never trust auto assumptions. So it's always important to set this up properly. You can actually tell it to set up attachment, set up attachment function on a component, basically that's its parent, which is gonna be our static mesh that is gonna be equal to our root component. So this just makes sure that the box is as the uh, child of the static mesh. All right, so this is everything that we need to create a collider box. Now what we need to do is we need to attach ourselves to an event. And now it's really important that you don't do this in the constructor because if you do attach to that event, to the delegate that we created uh, in the last video, like the box collision has delegates uh, declared as well, and if you attach to these delegates in the constructor, it's going to do this for the, the default or first instance of that, of that, of that, of that actor. So it's not going to work properly. You need to make sure that if you are doing event events, that they are properly initialized and basically set up at the on begin place on the begin play event. You could actually do this earlier on, but we are um, just for simplification doing this all in begin play. By the way, there's probably also like a scheduling system for the Unreal Engine where I could like say the Unreal Engine, hey, notify me in five seconds. I think there is something like that, I haven't used it yet, but there's probably something like that. I mean, like even Minecraft has a thing like that. And you basically tell it notify me in five seconds and then you don't need to do this like in a tick event at all, but we just want to stick to the concepts that we know and take a slow approach on that. All right, so uh, what we now want to do is uh, basically what we want to do is set up per instance uh, on component over lab event. And how do we do this? Well, there are two sides to that. First of all, we need a member function of that class. So in this case, a protected function with like void on component uh, begin overlap, something like that. We need a function for that, which actually needs to be a U function. I'm going to come to that why we need that as a U function in a second, but for now, just believe me, this needs to be a U function. So called when a others actors when a other actor, so its component hits the collider. Just want to have something like that. Um, some documentation here. So we're going to have a function here. What is the signature of this function? So there's several ways to find out. The easiest way to find out is just to go into C++, go to the my statue. You already used the on component. 
uh, begin overlap event and you can just take a look at this. All right, we have a few parameters. We have the overlapped component, the other actor, the other component, other body index from sweep and sweep results. So you can see in blueprints, you get them all. You can also look them up on the internet and find basically out what the signature is. I already prepared the signature somewhere. There it is. Let me copy this one. It's quite long. I need to scroll. Come on. So there we go. Copy the signature in and now let's go walk you a bit through the signature. First of all, we have the component that uh, was triggered. So basically this component is going to be equal to our uh, box collision. We could use this to just have one on component begin overlap and then basically check which component uh, it was inside the function. We also have this other actor, this A actor. This is the actor that actually uh, initiated the collision. So the actor that basically moved into the box. Also the component that moved into the box. You have this other body index from sweep and uh, sweep hit result. This is just something that we don't care really for now. So basically to, it's important to understand the first three. The component that has uh, been triggered that, or that is triggering that event, the actor that is uh, basically like the parameter of the event and the component is the parameter of the event. So let's add some implementation to that that actually calls our jump function. So basically what I wanna, wanna check uh, is um, if the uh, other actor, other actor, uh, is a is a is a nice function that basically checks if it is an instance of other class and in case this is the case basically just want to jump with like a velocity of five which is something that we might also want to have uh, let's do this later uh, let's first do that one so uh, what do we want to check well if you consider our unreal engine code in the my statue we always cast it to the default pawn um, there is like I don't know if this uh, is a is also a thing here is a no it's not an is a here so instance like instance office is something different so okay so in blueprints your cast and in C plus plus you have the is a function okay I can live with that so we need to check if it's, it's a default pawn of course if we want to check for a default pawn we also need to include for the default pawn maybe even through like the Unreal uh, build tool works a bit different, but yeah, let's add them. They include this in game framework default pawn.h. And what I now can do is I can basically check other actor is a, can now say default pawn, uh, uh, a default pawn static class. You get the static class, which is kind of like castable to something that is a understands. So basically what I'm going to check if is the other actor a default pawn, if it is true, jump, something like that. All right. So this concludes the implementation of the function. Now the only thing left is basically to bind this function to the delegate of our uh, special instance. So what we want to do is basically add it to the delegate of the box collision. So we can access this here, box collision, and we can basically now check, is there an on component begin overlap? Yeah, there is one on component begin overlap, which is a delegate, so it should have a method, which is called, like there's this broadcast method that we used in the last video to broadcast message around, but now we don't want to broadcast, now we want to actually listen to the messages. We can do this by calling the add function to basically add a listener to it, which um, you would then maybe think, yeah, maybe we're just gonna say this, and we might just gonna say our function name, but no, it's not working that easy. Actually, you need to create a special delegate object and then you basically take this delegate object and bind something to it. So what you need is this F script delegate. I'm just gonna call this uh, delegate subscriber, something like that. And then basically what I tell this subscriber is to bind a so-called U function, which is gonna bind a you're gonna bind to a C function declared with the uh, U function specifier. This is why we need this uh, U function here, so that it basically gets reflection assigned to it. And then I can basically assign this by giving it a sys pointer, so the object for which this should be called. And we also gonna put in the function, but not as the function. It's gonna need it to be put in as the function name as a string. And then we can basically just add the delegate subscriber. It just works like that. Don't ask me why. I think there is there maybe there might be even 
uh, there's like there's like there, 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 there is like a way or there was a way uh, to also bind raw functions but it's no longer like supported it's like deprecated you should use the the delegates and these subscriber patterns that I'm showing you here um, I mean, it's a few more lines of code. This might be even inlineable. I'm not quite sure if you can directly construct this. No, it doesn't seem like it, but uh, yeah, this is just how it works. So you create a subscriber object, kind of like you bind a function to this, and then you basically give it the delegate of your object you wanted to subscribe for. And this is all you actually need. If I am going to save this one, go into the engine, go in here, uh, hot reload the code. And let's see until this uh, uh, reloaded. All right, there it is. You can already see that we have the collision box around here. And if I would go in here, of course, we don't need that one now. Remove them and go into the viewport. And now I could even like go in and scale this a bit so that it's not in the ground, something like that maybe. Come on. It's like a very weird angle to do the scaling properly, something like that. Just want to have a big effectance range, actually. Do I want to have it that big? No, actually not, because then I'm going to have the same issue than when I tried it out that I was triggering it way too fast. Maybe move this a bit off. Yeah, that looks good. So just going to set up the, the box here a bit so that we can can set this up. Actually, as you might have seen, this shall now no longer be editable uh, here. It is actually here as component because the component is some way always editable. But now if you click on the component itself, you cannot really remove it. I don't know why this is, why you really... And now let's check this out. What's gonna do? Nothing. Yoohoo, it's not working. It's always nice if things don't go well. But we're gonna get to it, why it doesn't work. So let's debug this. First of all, I wanna see if this event is even triggered. I'm not quite certain why, why does it not, why does it not work? Weird, but we're gonna just check it. I'm just gonna add a, a debug, uh, add on screen debug message, which is just gonna, uh, Add something, maybe some green here. Debug message is gonna be uh, event. Just so that I know that we actually triggered this. And I also gonna add a scale so that you can see this a bit better. Three should be sufficient so that you can at least see that something is going on there. And let's see if the event is actually even triggered. I hope it is. Because I didn't, don't know what really can go wrong. No, the event is not even triggered. Uh, this might then be actually an instantiation problem that we are not up to date. Or are we? I'm just gonna delete that one again to just make sure that we not have some, some issue like that. Why is all the content now like that? That is super weird. Did I make like a bad... No, it's like showing everything. I probably clicked on something where I didn't want to click. Yeah, I was on search. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's drag this one in here. Still not doing it. Okay, then I'm gonna just quickly restart my editor. Right, one restart later. And yeah, there you can see it. Now it works. It was basically just me screwing up with the editor. And actually it's now gone, the component. That should not happen, actually. Actually, it should. Why is the event always triggering? The jump should actually disable itself and delete it. Oh, it, it deleted itself, but the event was still triggered. Yeah, yeah, I just was a bit confused. Um, all right, so one thing that I just want to do now, now that it's working again, I just want to make sure that the velocity is also a property. So let's make it property... Uh, Add it uh, everywhere. Uh, float velocity. Let's maybe make this to, yeah, it was like a bit high, maybe 3.f as default. And now we can also like put the velocity in here, something like that. So that we have this all nice. 
and sort it out. We could actually like even go in and check the is actually check the is launched first because I think it's cheaper to check this to check just first if it's not launched. We kind of like check it double the time, but the vents might fire quite often. But actually, we could like also go in and remove our event subscription button. Then no, we're not gonna do this. This you could you do if you have performance issues because it's like launching through like five thousand objects that trigger the event. Then you might wanna go and uh, delete the subscription. Um, I think you can remove some. You could probably also remove here. Can you? So this is just something I'm curious about. Can you on component begin overlap remove? Yeah, you can remove. You can actually remove all. But this is not probably not what you want. You probably want to kind of like, if you want to remove it, you probably want to store your script delegate somewhere in your class and then later on remove it. Um, but we don't need this now. Oh, life, I, I mistyped lifetime again. Yeah, that's amazing. I always like to do this. Um, okay, but that's not the point. So that's all nice and fine. If I would hot reload, I also get the other one as a parameter, but now I have an issue. Now I um, I had my actor, it's like all nicely static coded, but now I have like, I have actually two issues. The first one is that it's all too C++ -y. You cannot really influence stuff on, uh, on the blueprint side. This is one issue and the other issue it's static. It will always ever only be uh, triggerable by the uh, player it will never be triggerable by the statue. So if I would like move this somewhere here and just go to the statue, the statue is not gonna trigger that one jumping. But I might want to have this. I might want to have this uh, customizable. Uh, who can trigger this? And um, so we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna make it uh, customizable. What can be triggered? And then we're gonna also make this a bit more blueprintable, extensible. And then we're gonna add something that's gonna be amazing. But that's something that we can't really uh, that we can't really see on our character. But we can later on visualize this on our statue. I'm gonna show it to you. All right. So what we're gonna do now is make this a bit more flexible. First of all, I wanna make this. Um, not check for the default pawn. I want to make this check dynamically. When we can actually do this, we can add another U property, uh, which is also added anywhere. And this U property is going to be a U class pointer. And this is going to be the trigger class. So the class on which we want to trigger, which I'm just going to set by default to the A default pawn. So this is going to be the class for which we want to trigger. And instead of checking for the default pawn, we're just going to check for the trigger class. As easy as that. If I would add this one in, recompile, we could now easily, as soon as the recompiling is done, change on, on which we are triggering. So if I start this by default now, it didn't jump up. Let's do this again. As you can see, yeah, it jumped up because we were close to it and it despawned. But we can of course now also go in and we can now change this from the default pawn to the my statue. Let's change this to the my statue, save it and start. Now if I'm getting close, it's doing nothing. But if I go to this, yeah, okay, the statue is way too... Why did I it already jump? It shouldn't jump that fast. Let's maybe put this a bit more aside. So I cannot really trigger it, but if I move into the statue and it starts moving, you can kind of like see that, that the, 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 the thing jumped and the statue knocked it over, uh, which is not really what is supposed to be. Let's maybe move this all a bit out of the range of the statue so it's not knocking this over. So that's flying to Nirvana. So maybe something like that. It's kind of like triggering a bit early, I think. But that's interesting why it's triggering so early. Maybe because the box scaling is not displayed correctly. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, I know why it's triggering so fast. Because we have these big, big bounding boxes around of the uh, around of the statue, so it's already overlapping with the uh, with that one here. So we could like go in and try to maybe isolate them to do different physics layers and put them on physics layers and stuff. But if you are interested in physics layers, of course, you can consider watching videos that go a bit more uh, in depth about physics layers and stuff. Uh, maybe we do this in the future as well, but for now I'm going to be good with this. 
So it's just stringing so early because of the big box that is controlling like the movement of the statue. Okay. But as you can see, as soon as we get near, it's now also reacting to the statue and no longer to the player. Player, nothing. Doesn't care about us. But it cares about the box and jumps. That's nice. Okay, so now let's make this blueprint interactable. Go back to C++ and instead of now uh, calling jump here, I am basically going to redirect this to a um, event in, in uh, blueprints. Let's uh, quickly go to the move uh, component because we had delegates here and I just want to steal the declaration here because I'm, uh, I'm bad. And actually we're not going to um, specify anything here now. I'm just gonna put this here. This is not now only blueprint. I'm gonna remove this. Um, now let's rename this. This is gonna be on on uh, jump trigger. Just gonna call this on jump trigger. Uh, it is gonna get a a class actor, and this is gonna be the uh, triggering or the yeah, just gonna call this other actor and we also gonna now have two parameters so let's make this two param so we're gonna have the class pointer a actor and we're gonna have the class uh, a u component or what what did we have down here u primitive component okay something like that class u primitive component I just wanna give them the component and the actor so that we can we could like use this now that we are not triggering on the uh, actually not triggering when we have the statue we can now use this to basically just trigger on the on the static mesh all right as you can see it's looking quite ugly but this is like as we always get it um, let's grab the name here and let's instantiate this as a uh, I forgot which specifiers we had I think it was it was blueprint assignable. Yeah, there it is. So we're gonna add this one here. So your property blueprint assignable. It's gonna be the F uh, on jump trigger signature, and it's gonna be on jump trigger because it's gonna be triggered on jump. Okay, there we get it. And now instead of directly calling our jump event inside of that. We basically now want to take the on jump trigger and oh, the velocity is now no longer being passed through. So uh, let's actually make the velocity a friend. I think this really doesn't matter for uh, blueprints because blueprints just see the edit anywhere, I think. Uh, but I'm not quite sure of that. We're gonna see if we get it. Um, right, and then we're basically gonna broadcast the event around and we're just gonna input the component, the... No, it's the other actor and the component, something like that. You can see it already generated that, that's really nice that it... Yeah, they're not, but they're... Okay, so if I get everything right, this should now be a bit more robust. It built failed. Uh, and we also need a comma here. Okay, maybe it was not even the, the one up here. It was the comma here that was missing. Don't we need a class specifier here? It could actually be uh, that we don't need a one here. Like, actually in C++ you could like get rid of all of them, but I was like lazy and copied that from somewhere, like on the references, and they had it, so it ended up being in my code as well. Oh yeah. Two params. Now we are no longer singular, we are plural. Two params. That took quite some time to find out. That looks better. All right, so live coding succeed and playing should now do nothing. This shouldn't work, no. This shouldn't work, that's good. Now what we can do is we can now start and write some code for that. So let's go into the XP actor. Let's click the actor itself and scroll down and we now have this on jump trigger. Oh yeah, what is that? 
Ah, oh, we need to bind this one now as well. It's not binding itself. Hmm. Okay, then do it. If you want to bind this, then do this like that. It's okay, I'm fine with that. Just make sure that this is like on the event begin play so that it's bind properly. And then I have this other actor and other component. And what I could just do at the other component is cast to static mesh component in case I get this one. I can like say jump. Yeah, I think. Do I have variables here? No, I don't have them. Do I actually do I have my get velocity? I think no, because it's not exposed. Uh, just gonna put in three for now. But we should make sure to also see uh, that how we can propagate them. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove the cast for now to be sure that this all works actually yeah this works so if I'm gonna directly handle this this works so so but this is actually not why uh, I was doing this yes I wanted to jump but actually I had something more into my mind but I'm, yeah we're just gonna do this for now or are we no you're gonna get a small video after that so for now we're just gonna add the jump oh what i want to do of course is uh i want to propagate the uh the float so i believe we're just gonna need the the blueprint assignable and i think as far as i'm concerned you can actually if we put that one here we can just move it back where it belongs somewhere here so we just want to make sure that we get give it the blueprint assignable. This one, no assignable. This one, yes, we want to hang them assignable. And then we have this one. Yeah, that's that's okay. I could like also assign this here, make this blueprint assignable, so we could dynamically change this. Trigger itself, no, this shall not be. I think it is already blueprint assignable because I'm an idiot and can't read. Okay, so this should give us the proper access to that can assign this now and okay it failed so to make this accessible we want to add the blueprint read write specifier also want to add this to lifetime velocity and also the trigger class so that the might can can change this around at least i hope at least that this is changeable so let's hit the compile again and see it failed oh it should not be used on private members okay so you are actually yelling at us that this shall be protected. So yeah, we are going to do what you want and they're going to move them up to protect it. I mean, it's in theory, it's like C++ doesn't care. Maybe if the compiler optimizes something away, it might care. But if you tell the compiler to do it correctly, you can do and change everything you like of the class. You can corrupt all memory you want. But this should now expose the parameter so I can go in here and basically get the velocity there you go get velocity assign this to the jump function and now it's like propagating correctly and we can later on after jumping also apply this which I argue to do actually now because it's actually quite fast to do and I'm knocking it over again that is not I, I think it, I just thought I changed the position of that that dude didn't I? Oh. Somehow it magically decided. Probably because I spammed Control Z a few times. Boom. Actually, come on. Get get to your proper point. Still a range, yes, good. Yeah, because the collider is big. Alright, but yeah, uh, this concludes the video of today. We have now implemented our own custom actor and uh, what we're going to do next time is we're now going to make it interactable with the statue. Yes, you heard right. The statue is going to be interacting with that friend here. And this is going to be amazing. So, see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, have a nice day. Bye.